Hey there! So, today we're going to be starting a new tutorial series where we're going to be making a space combat game similar to an early 90s game that I really liked called Solar Winds. So, let's dive right in. Alright, welcome. I know it's been a hot minute since I made a Game Maker tutorial, but we're going to start a new series here. I'm also going to be restarting the Match 3 series uh, relatively soon, just rebuilding it from the ground up. So if any of you have been following that, uh, know that that is coming within the week, a new beginning to that at least. And this time I will follow through with the whole thing. So apologies if you were following the old one. I'm going to use the same assets on that, but today we're going to be looking at a super, super beginning guide to Game Maker Studio 2. So this is aimed entirely at people who are brand new to Game Maker Studio 2 and programming in general. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a project from concept, inception, and then building out the features as we go. So what I want to do is there's an old game that it seems like only I remember. Uh, it was called Solar Winds. Um, from the early 90s, and it was a PC game, it was shareware, and it was just, I just love the heck out of that game. So here's a picture of what it looked like. I'm sure that I could find, I'm sure I could find it on Abandonware if I looked even just a little bit hard, but the game was called Solar Winds. Um, you were this lone ship who was exploring this solar system, finding off uh, enemies, and when you would go to a planet, you could trade stuff, or you could, there's like a storyline. You were trying to escape from the solar system, and then that's where the shareware version ended. <laughs> uh, so that's all I ever got to see. But uh, yeah, so this is kind of what I want to build. I want to build this uh, scrolling 3D shoot or not 3D, 2D top-down shooter with planets and with enemies to interact with. So um, what I'm going to be using is the Sparkling Labs Solar or not Sparkling Labs Superpowers assets, which I'll put a link to in the description down below. If you just Google um, superpowers and then like GitHub assets or something like that, you'll probably be able to find it, but I'll link it in the description below. I'm also going to be using Game Maker Studio 2. I'm not going to be using any of the features that you would need the paid for version, but the paid for version is now $39 if you want to export to Mac or PC. So that's a thing. And you can find Game Maker Studio at yoyogames.com. Now, you'll have to make an account in order to, to use this, but yeah. So let's go from the very, very beginning here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. We're going to be using GML, Game Maker Language. I'm going to call this uh, Solar Winds Knockoff. We'll save that. And it's going to think for a second. It's going to open this up. Now, I have a nice picture as my backdrop here. By default, it has these this kind of abstract thing. If you want to change this to be any picture you want, you can just go up here to File, and actually, is it, yeah, it's File, Preferences, and under General Settings, you can click on Background, and you can set this to any image you want, and you can Stretch Style Fit, Best Fit, at Desktop Stretch, whatever you want to do. Uh, I have mine just at Screen Stretch, and I have this great big 19 by 20, or 1920 by 1080 image of a forest. So, if you see anybody who's using Game Maker Studio 2 that has a different background, that's how you can do that yourself. Now let's talk a little bit about the Game Maker Studio interface here. So up top, we've got a home button. That'll take you back to the start page. We have a new project, open project, save. The save button is something you should be getting super used to. It's control S, just like on everything else. Uh, this is to create an executable. Um, this is only available if you're using the non-free version. We've got debug, which we'll talk about more as we get going. We've got run, stop while you're running, clean, which we'll talk about that later. Uh, general settings, game options, zoom in, zoom out. That's for when you have stuff here. And then this button will either collapse or expand all the dock panels. That I guess you were, I guess it only expands the ones that you were using. I thought it expanded all of them. Yep, it only expands the ones that you were using. Now these dock panels, there's three of them and I only have two of them open right now. One is for resources, the other is for output uh, and uh, any kind of debug information from your scripting. The third one is actually from your rooms. Now every Game Maker project, or Game Maker Studio project, gets started with one room, 
And what I think is kind of weird is when they make a room, they don't use their own conventions for rooms. But if I double click on that, you'll see this third panel come up, which is for rooms. I can navigate on the room layout menu by holding down the middle mouse button. Uh, and then I forget what it is on laptop. It might be alt and right click or alt and left click. Now you now have a tab that will allow you to go between workspace and room. And now if I do expand and collapse, nope, it still keeps that collapsed. Huh. It must be my laptop that this was always getting in the way. All right, so I'm gonna close this to room zero and we're gonna talk a little bit about the resources panel here. Exactly what they are and some naming conventions that GameMaker Studio has. So these are sprites, which are any images that you would wanna import. Uh, you can make a new sprite by right-clicking, choosing Create Sprite. If you're using GameMaker Studio 1.4, there should be a little Pac-Man button up here that you can use. Now, when you create a sprite, the general GameMaker Studio convention is that you would name that sprite SPR underscore, and then whatever you'd want to name it. Now, if your project is at all any size, I'm going to delete this one. Actually, I'll leave it for a second. You can imagine how this would get full up, because if every single sprite has to have its own individual spot, uh, individual file. This is great for starting out, but if you're making a project of any kind of size, this is gonna get pretty unwieldy pretty quickly. So if you right click, you can create a new group. And then, uh, actually, sorry, it's not group, it's... Yeah, I guess it is group. I thought it was folder. Maybe in 1.0 it's or 1.4 it's folder. And then you can drag items to your groups, and then that way you only have to look at your group. So you might have a group for players, or um, enemies, or projectiles, or however you'd want to go about uh, doing that. So I'm just going to delete that. Uh, the prefix that is usually used for sounds is SND, I believe. Let me make sure. Yep, sounds are SND. So SND underscore. Uh, backgrounds are BG underscore, which is, I guess what you would call for, see I'm thinking about 1.4, so I guess All right, cool. So that's the basic layout. Now next time we're gonna talk about how we can add sprites and even make them animated. And then we'll talk about objects and getting our objects moving. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord, where there's plenty of people there talking, some who know a lot more about programming than I do, which is awesome. Everybody's willing to help out. It's a really cool community. Uh, you can follow me on Patreon if you like these videos. As little as a dollar a month can help me making them, but uh, don't feel any kind of requirement to contribute to that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give me a like. You can subscribe and hit the bell to make sure that you're notified when I post new videos. I'll be posting new Game Maker Studio videos about every third day. So, yeah. Otherwise, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.